Welcome to lecture 6. The objective of this video is to create the following stream graph. Here we use a double vertical axis to both plot the air humidity above and the soil humidity below the zero. This creates a pipe of data which makes it easy to follow how the humidity changes in time and in relation to each other. To create this plot with D3, we have to go through the following steps. First, we need to define certain things. We define a scale function. This is a function that maps values from the data domain, so the actual air humidity values between 0 and 100%, to pixels on our canvas. Then, we need to define an x-axis with tick marks and labels and two y-axis, one going up and one going down. Also, we need to define the two colored areas using the data. Finally, when we have defined all elements, we can put them together in the SVG container. We want to write our stream graph so that we can use it for other types of data as well. Therefore, we create a plotting function that we will define in the next slide, but in the main.js file we call this method and supply it with the data specific for our plot, which is all the sensor data, the name of the field for the x-axis, in our case the date time, the fields for the two y-axis, air humidity and soil humidity, and a set of labels, for which we also use the contents of the data dictionary. Finally, we also supply it with the container element where we will add our SVGs to. In our stream graph.js, we define the plot function, which we call in the main.js file. Again, you see here that we have the arguments for data, the property of the x data, the property or fields for the upper and lower area, the labels. We could also indicate the range of values that are allowed on the y-axis. We give the plot of default width and height for our canvas, some default colors and default margins. Now I have to warn you that reading D3 code can be quite intimidating in the beginning. It also goes too far for these short videos to explain every line of code. I will briefly explain what each piece of code does and then I advise you to play around with it to understand exactly what it does. As indicated in our steps, we first have to define the mapping from the data domain to pixels on the canvas. We do this for the x values and also for the two y values. So for instance for y up, we define that the range of data should be that of the y range, so between 0 and 100%. And then we say that it has to map on the range, and these are the range of pixels on the canvas that it should map it to. Here, from height divided by 2, which is the center of the canvas, to a maximum value of margin top, which is near the top of the canvas. Similarly for the y down values, you map the same range between 0 and 100, but now from the center of the canvas, to almost the bottom of the canvas. Y down and Y up and X are functions. If you supply it with a data value, for instance zero, it will map it to the proper pixel. In this case, the center of the canvas. Using the scaling functions, we can now define the X axis and the Y axis. There are default helper functions to do this with D3. You can see that here, as x is bottom and x is left. All we have to do extra is to make sure that we transform the axis bottom to the location where we want the axis to be. So the x axis is in the center of the canvas. So we transform it to a height divided by 2. And similarly, the y axis starts on the left at a certain margin, margin left. Now that we have defined the axes, we can define the data areas. D3 
as an area helper function. We supply it by a type of curve, which can be a smooth curve or a linear curve. We supply it with the x values and the y0 and y1 values. In this case, the y0 values will always be on the x axis, while the y1 values are determined by the actual data. We do the same for the area below the curve. Now that we have defined all elements, we can start combining them and adding them to the SVG. First we create the SVG, which is our drawing canvas. Then we append two paths using the area definitions that we created. So the upper one and the lower one, filling it with the default theme colors. Then we append the groups, which contain the x-axis and the two y-axis. Finally, we append the SVG to our container. The final result will look like this.